secrets over there. We want to hear what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we just trying to get ourselves together. Too. All right. Uh, it is good to see everybody this morning. We pray that God help us this morning. Uh, got a lot to accomplish. So, well, actually, we don't have a lot to do, you know, more than extra, but uh, I need to get to her. So, I can. <laughs> so. oh, uh, we'll take our time. Uh, the new bulletins, uh, not the post office bulletins, the devotion. Uh, the new devotions are up here. If you haven't got one, make sure you grab one. You know somebody needs one. We had some extra class time, so if you know somebody needs one, take one. Share it with you. All right, we're going to pray and then we're going to get started. Father, thank you for your goodness. We love and appreciate all that you do for us. You've been so kind to us, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Father, for uh, helping us, uh, Lord. Uh, as we, uh, with the passing of this body, I pray to uh, help us, uh, Lord, to do honor her at that funeral, Lord, to be able to preach the gospel to her family members and whoever may, may come, Lord. So I pray to help us do that. May they respond. And it's one thing to hear, but it's another to respond. So I pray, Father, that people to hear and respond to the gospel. Thank you, Father, for uh, the testimony about Miss Ruby. Uh, Lord, uh, so we pray for her. Ask you to help her as well. And uh, again, thank you just for being good to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.
Meet me there. 
some men, they just, they, they don't care, you know. They just, they, you know, you don't agree with we're going to argue. You can't live at peace with them. But as much as possible, we ought to live at peace with all men. But I want you to notice this morning, I want you to notice the speaker. Who speaks here? You know, this is not God talking. The author says, Isaiah says, Thou will keep him from This is Isaiah talking. Isaiah's talking. Actually, he's talking to the Lord. And Isaiah says, uh, Lord, you'll keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon. Well, how Isaiah do that? You reckon he knew that from experience? He wasn't quoting some great author, you know. You know, we, we nowadays we quote all these little sayings and all this, you know, all the little sayings, too blessed to be stressed and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're too blessed to be stressed, you let me know. Because the next time you get stressed, I'm going to remind you of it. Okay? The fact is, uh, at time, one time or another, we all get stressed. Matter of fact, Paul was stressed. Paul said, listen, I'm pressed beyond measure. I think they go him and him and Luke were scratching their head there on the boat and said, I'll hope that we're going to be saved to take it away. You know, God hadn't spoke to Paul down at the bottom of the ship. Paul said, Well, listen, we're done for us, we're done for. The fact is, all of us have stress. All of us have problems come up. Man that's born a woman is a few days and full of troubles. You know, he said, if you are having trouble today, you ought to thank God for it. Because those days are few. The day that there's not some kind of heartache, not some kind of trouble, uh, you know, they, those are few and far between. Second Corinthians chapter number four, uh, verse number thirteen. Second Corinthians chapter number four. Let's see if I can find that. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number thirteen. 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 13 says, We have the same spirit of faith according as is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore will speak. I believe that's what you find Isaiah doing here. Isaiah said, Hey, listen, I found this to be true. I found this to be true. And therefore, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak it. I'm gonna let you know. And God recorded it. God had Isaiah to report. So uh, look in 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 24. First Thessalonians 5 verse number 24 says, Faith is he that, is he that calleth you, who will also do it. So when Isaiah can say, Thou, you know what he was doing? He was looking at someone he found faith. Faith. God, uh, Paul had found God to be faith. Second Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter number 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. And uh, verse number 3 says, But the Lord is faith. Who shall, who shall establish you and keep you from evil? First Timothy chapter number one and verse number fifteen says, "This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world." How can that be a faithful saying? Because God's faithful to His promises. Listen, if God were not faithful, you and I would have no hope this morning. Aren't you glad God's faithful? Aren't you glad God doesn't just put words in His Bible just to take up space? Amen. He doesn't put promises in there willy-nilly. He doesn't put in there something He has no intentions of keeping and no ability to keep. So when Jesus says, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, evidently God had all intentions of keeping that promise. Hebrews chapter 10 in verse number 23. Here the Bible says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without waver, for he is faithful that promised. Why can we why can we hold fast? Well, because God's faithful. 
God said, if you put your trust in me, you put your trust in my son, you can rest assured I'll save you. And I'll put your name in the Lamb's book of life and it'll be there forever and I'll never blot it out. And when all the trials and tribulations of this world are wrapped up, you'll find out yourself in the presence of God just like he promised. Isn't that good? First Peter chapter number 4 and verse number 19. First Peter chapter 4 verse number 19 it says, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit them or commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator. You see, let them that suffer according to the will of God. You realize something at this point that uh, sometimes we suffer because we do things wrong. Sometimes we suffer because of God's will. Job did nothing wrong. Matter of fact, God looked at the devil and said, said to, to, to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? He's a perfect man. Job had done nothing wrong. And God let him suffer and let him suffer. You say, why would he let him suffer? Because God was in the process of proving what Job was so that you and I would have an example to follow, just to be faithful. Now you and I can go through trials and sufferings with the knowledge of knowing what God's doing. Job didn't know that. You and I have a privilege that Job didn't have. You and I know that the Bible says that the end of Job was better than his beginning. So that suffering brings forth Fruit brings forth. Matter of fact, Jesus said that whom the Lord loveth, he chases. Or Paul said, whom the Lord loveth, he chases. Jesus said it when he said uh, that about, uh, about the, the, the vine that brings, that brings forth fruit, he pruned it. Or he, 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 he pruned it so that it brings more fruit. More fruit. Now, we've got a tomato plant out back. Tammy said yesterday, it's one why we get tomato trees instead of plants. But we got this tomato plant. And uh, it, growing up around the porch and everything else now but uh, you know when it gets little branches like this you know you always get these little ones in the inside there and that's where none of the stem grows and you you know you get so many stems and you start breaking those off well why do you do that well because I want the tomatoes to be bigger I want them to have more tomatoes and not more leaves I don't know how the, how, the, how the tomato plant feels about it when I pinch those little things off it. I don't know if it says that hurts or not, but anyway, you know. Well, I'm not doing it just to try to be cruel to the tomato plant. I'm doing it to get the tomato plant to produce, to bring forth fruit. And you and I have the knowledge of seeing how God dealt, dealt with Job and know it brought forth fruit. So, God, Isaiah is looking at that God. And he looks at that God and says, Thou, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. So that's the one who, that's who's speaking, and that's the God he's speaking about. He's talking about thou. Isaiah's confession. Uh, is, you notice now, he's talking to God. He's not talking to you and me. He's not talking to his friends. He's talking to God. And he says to God, he says, Thou, We'll keep him in perfect peace. Well, how did he know that? I think he found him found him to be true. I think I do you ever think that maybe? Well, you know, second Corinthians, let me say this for Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number uh Second Corinthians chapter number one, I think it was in verse number four, where it talks about uh, that God comforted us in all our tribulations that we might be able to, to comfort others. You know, for God to comfort us, He's got to be faithful to us. I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to comfort people long distance. When Sally called Friday night, you know, saying Clyde was agitated, you know, and uh, she asked if we could pray for her, you know. Well, that was great, and we, we did pray for her. 
Well, there was nothing like having somebody sitting beside her. You know, you can't really, I couldn't, you, we couldn't really comfort her over the telephone. We could promise, but she still had to sit there by herself. So what I'm getting at is comfort takes a personal touch. And if God has promised to comfort us in our tribulation, He's going to have to be pretty personal. I like that. I like the personal God, by the way. I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's just something about having someone there. And I'm glad God is a personal God. And so, this is an experience that Isaiah, of course, you know, in, in Isaiah chapter number six, we studied about that. That was the one that Isaiah was talking to, was the one that he saw high lifted up there. The one that Isaiah was talking to was the one who had cleansed him and commissioned him. The very one who said to Isaiah, you're going to be prophesying to a bunch of hard-headed people. And he said, I want you to prophesy to the land of desolate. You know, if, if he told him the land was going to be desolate, that doesn't sound like he was going to have a whole lot of success. You know, I wonder how many people would pastor a church if the church said, listen, preacher, you ain't going to have much success here. I actually pastored a church in, in South Carolina for a little while, and one of the deacons told me, he said, preacher, you're going to have to preach a lot of funerals, including my own, before this church will ever change. How's that for encouragement? <laughs> but you know what? God's still faithful. God's still faithful. He still saved a few folks. And God's still faithful. Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse number 28. This God that Isaiah was talking to. Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse number 28. Um, let me see if I can find it here. God, God says, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. This one that Isaiah was talking to was not only one who, who, he, who commissioned him and forgave him and cleansed him, but he's the creator. Well, he created all the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow weary. Now you and I go weary sometimes. You and I sometimes need help, help trying to get along and trying to get up, get through things. But God doesn't grow weary. Aren't you glad of that? I'm glad that we got such a God whose wisdom uh, can't be, whose uh, there's no searching of His understanding. You can't search out the wisdom. Aren't you glad? That we can put our trust in such a God. How many of you ever got in a situation and wondered if God could figure out a way to get you out of it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know that's not a problem with God. Matter of fact, uh, the two chapters that we're dealing with at, at Cobar today, one of them, the way it starts out, it starts out like, Boy, it's just not good. First couple of verses is just like, oh man, things are just terrible. You know what the next verse is? The next verse is God delivered. Just it doesn't take take no time. You know, Job's in the dark, deep, darkest of, of times. And the next thing you know, everything was restored and far better. Why God works that way, I don't know. You know, uh, sometimes I, I don't know about you, but I'm one of these. I want to see that if you're going, God, if you're going to answer, show me how you're going to answer ahead of time. All right. So uh, when I'm going through it, I'll know kind of, kind of what to expect. But God doesn't always do that. Matter of fact, God very seldom ever does. Sometimes you can see trouble coming, but sometimes it just sneaks up on you. Job didn't see it coming. He just blindsided him. <laughs> God didn't, God didn't talk to Job until he got ready to answer. But boy, when he answered. Isaiah chapter 43, verse number uh, 15. Here it says, uh, 
I am the Lord, the, your Holy Lord, the Creator of Israel, and uh, your King. So this one that Isaiah says, hey, you're a faithful God. I can put my faith. He's a Holy One. He's the King of Israel. Now the kings of Israel had come and gone. Uzziah had come and gone. He was a good king. Hezekiah comes and goes. All the other kings come and goes. All but this one that Isaiah said that, that I can put my trust in. He doesn't come and go. I'm glad of that. But then the action. Let me give you this. I'm going to pick up the pace here. The action of the one spoken of. Notice he says that will keep him in perfect peace. That word keep is the idea of it's on the one. The, the God gives it simply means that God will keep on keeping. It ain't something that he does for a little while and then, then forgets about it. I am the world's worst about starting something and then forgetting about it. And then eventually might be able to. I'm good that, I'm good that way with books. I start reading a book, I'm, boy, I'm all interested in it. Next thing you know, I got interested in something else. Now I'm reading this book. I got about 2,000 books that I've, that a that number. <laughs> I got about 2,000 books that, I, that I've started reading and, and finished reading 10, 15 years later. <laughs> I mean, if I read them, again, I guess I could read them and recycle them if I just read them. But no, I, I, one of the reasons I keep them is because I haven't finished reading them yet. I usually get around to finish reading them, but they, you, it's not. Always at the same time. So, uh, that's the one. That means to keep on keeping. To be kept it means to keep you kept from dangers and alarms. Now, there are those times that dangers and alarms come away, come come our way, but they don't they don't hurt us. They don't destroy us. Dangers and alarms came to Job, but they didn't destroy. Us. To be guarded with fidelity. Aren't you glad that God is faithful and true? I like this one. To be kept close. You know, you sing, sometimes you sing that song, Under His Wings. Here we go. Under His Wings, I'm safely with my Aren't you glad you can be kept close? Near to the heart of God. And I'm glad of that. So thus our peace is guarded, safeguarded and maintained. Why? Because we've got such a faithful God who keeps us in peace. Peace, that means completeness, soundness, tranquility, security. It can mean the absence of strife, but it implies much more. It expresses completeness, harmony, and fulfillment. How could Paul say, and I've learned to be content in whatever state I am. Whatever state I am, I've learned to be content. Sometimes that state's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes everything's going right. And sometimes all the wheels have fell off the bus and the fair is flat. But you know what? God can keep us in perfect peace. I like the Kings. They used to sing this song. Sometimes he calms the storms. Sometimes he calms me. You know, God doesn't always choose to calm the storms. Sometimes he just chooses to calm the saints in the midst of the storm. But aren't you glad you're safe, God? That peace can be guarded and maintained. I'm glad. And so, uh, peace, completeness, soundness, soundness tranquility, security. And I, 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 yeah, I think I just read all that, didn't I? Boy. But uh, anyway, to wish peace, the dictionary says it's to imply a blessing. So when you wish peace upon somebody, you're, you're implying you want God to, to give them a special blessing. Second Corinthians chapter number one and verse number seven says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. But the peace of a sound mind. Christians ought to be at peace. You say, preacher, you don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know that if your faith is in God, if your trust is in God, that God is going to take care of you. And you can rest assured of that. 
Talk about 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 3 and 4, about God comforting us in all our tribulation. And he doesn't just talk, comfort us in our tribulation just for the sake of comforting us. He comforts us so that we can be a comfort to other people. God wants us to be a blessing. Right? What's that song that uh, we haven't sung? I don't think we've ever sung it here, but uh, make me a blessing. Or make me a child of a blessing. That's what we ought to do. That's what we ought to desire in our life. life. We want God to be as a channel of blessing to others. The only way that you can come, you know, it's easy for somebody to say, well, I, feel, I'm, I know how you feel. You know, good will, they've never felt been through that situation. You don't know how they feel. Even if you've been through that situation, you know what? You still don't know how they feel. Because everybody reacts differently. Everybody struggles with something different. But we can say, I don't know what you're going through. I may have never been through what you're going through. I may have never heard what you've gone through. The, the way that you the way that you're hurting to, with what you're going through. But this is what I've been through. And this is how I've hurt. And this is how God helped me. You can do that. John chapter number 14 it talks about uh, the comfort. Jesus said, when I go away, he said, I'm going to send a comfort. I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Aren't you glad? That same Holy Spirit that he spoke about that would come on the day of Pentecost that would be their comforter when you're saved, that same Holy Spirit moves on the inside of you. You know what he wants to be to you? He wants to be your comforter. Then, the quality of our peace. The word peace, and I, I, I found this kind of interesting. The word peace and the word perfect are the same Hebrew word. That word is just repeated. In other words, God will not only give you peace, but He'll give you peace upon peace, or the peace of peace, the greatest peace. God always gives us peace. Every good gift, James says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from from, above, from the Father of lights. And who's, every good and perfect gift. God doesn't just give just enough to get you by. God gives you the very best. Aren't you that? Tranquility. Tranquility of tranquility. Think about that. Peace of peace. Of peace. In other words, God, what God gives can't be beat. I think often, and I know I say this often, but you think about those of, of Hebrews chapter number 11, you get all those great heroes of the faith, you know, that are listed there. But then you got the others, and others. Those that didn't get all the, all the answers, those that didn't see all the great miracles, but yet somehow know that God gave them peace, and they lived their life in such a way that, that uh, they had a good report. Isn't that good? That will keep him in perfect peace. Now, who's the ones receiving that benefit of being kept? That's those whose minds stay upon them. Whose mind, whose purpose, is to, is whose intellectual framework is stayed on them. That my word stay means to lean, to rest upon. To lean against or to be braced against. Let me ask you this morning. Do you really trust the Lord? I heard this example the other day and I thought it was so good. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people believe God can do a lot of things, but they don't trust Him. And the man gave the example. He, he, he talked about this uh, tightrope walker from France that, that stretched his line across the Niagara Falls, and, and he was walking back. He walked back and forth across the falls there. And he rode to the wheelbarrow, walked, walked it back and forth across the falls, and he saw this little boy sitting uh, up down there watching him. And he said, do you believe I can do this? He said, do you believe I can carry you across this thing? He said, yeah, I believe you can do it. He said, will you let me carry you? He said, no. He said, I thought you said you believed I can do it. He said, I do believe you can do it. He said, but I don't trust you to do it. <laughs> so anyway, that's the way we are. We believe God can do all things. We believe God can give perfect faith, but we don't trust him to do it. So we try to figure everything out ourselves, do everything ourselves, and get everything worked out, you know, rather than just lean on him. 
But that's what he wants us to do, just to lean upon him. The word stay means to lean the wrist upon, uh, brace against. Isaiah chapter number 6. Uh, Isaiah, of course, you know, he saw the hot Lord high and lifted up. And that's the idea, that, you know, the idea that he just sticks his gaze on it. Just like Peter, when he got out of the boat during that storm, he went to walk to Jesus, and as long as he was looking at Jesus, he was okay. But then he got around looking at the storm. And you got to think, you know, this storm's mighty big. I wonder if Jesus is really as good as this. <laughs> as strong as, strong as he is, says he is, you know. I, mean, I wonder if I heard that. Like, I didn't hear that right. You know? like, he didn't really say to me, come out here. Like, I did something I wasn't supposed to. And uh, you know what happened? He began to sing. Aren't you glad when he called, God answered him? Jesus just reached down and grabbed him and said, Peter, why would you get white and bother looking away? Why would you get so wrapped up in looking at the storm? Rather than looking at me. Those side have been stayed. Uh, it's you the, the um, Passive voice, parts of one passive voice indicates to us. I, I don't know all these uh, English terms, I have to kind of work with them a little bit. But it's usually a state that it's coming into existence and, and, and continues to exist. In other words, we don't just look to God for a little while and then quit. We just look at Him and lean on Him and just keep on. So, Romans chapter number 14. Let me read this to you. Romans chapter number 14, verse number 4. Romans chapter number 14, verse number 4. Who are thou that says and judges another, uh, another man servant to his own master? Stand, he standeth to fall. Yea, he shall be held up. Why? Why shall he be held up? Because he's strong? Because he's got a strong faith? Because he never doubts? Or is he held up because God is able to make him to stand? You know, the way things are going, persecution may be right around the corner for Christians. You say, preacher, I don't know if I can stand. You lean upon God and you find out you can stand. Why? Because God will hold you. And I know I've given you the illustration about the, the little boy. I told you about this before. The little boy, the preacher called the little boy up and told him, he said, I want you to stand here. And he went over and he just took the little boy and he just pushed him. And uh, the boy did all he could to stand, but he just couldn't stand. And he called his dad. He told his dad, he said, you stand here. He said, told the little boy, he said, now you lean. Just lean against your boot. Put him back in the back. Said, you just lean against your dad. You know, as hard as he pushed, he couldn't push that little boy over. The little boy wasn't any stronger. He wasn't any bigger. He hadn't grown to be a superman or anything like that. He didn't find a phone book to change into before. But the fact is, he couldn't move his dad. And because he couldn't move his dad, that little boy stood. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to just lean on him so when the devil gets to pushing on him, you know, you know what? When that little boy was being pushed on, he wasn't actually bearing the weight of that man pushing. You know who was bearing the weight? His dad was bearing the weight. God wants us to do that, that, that way too. To lean on him so when the devil gets to pushing on us, he's not pushing on us, but he's pushing against God. Proverbs chapter number three, and uh, notice now Paul said, or Isaiah said, Whose mind has stayed upon thee, that thou that he had spoken of earlier. He said, uh, You stay on him. Proverbs 3, verse number 5 says that, that we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to all understanding. Trust in the Lord with all you. You ask, you say, Preacher, I don't know what to do. Well, James said, If any man ask God, let him ask. Uh, amen. Uh, Lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And God will give him, you know, that wisdom. But let him not doubt. 
So you ask God, and you trust God to give you that wisdom. You make the best decision, the decision that you think God wants you to make, and you just trust God with it. You say, well, it didn't work out the way I thought it would. Well, that doesn't mean that God didn't answer his prayer, answer your prayer. That just simply means God's ways are higher than our ways, and we don't understand it. Proverbs 29 and verse number 25 says that they trust the men that trust the Lord, they'll be safe. You'll be safe trusting God. Isaiah 26, our text there, verse number, but the verse number four says, Trust ye in the Lord forever. For the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You know what? You don't ever have to worry about leaning upon God and finding out that He's not able to. We can trust him. Now, why? Why this perfect peace? What's the reason behind it? How do we get it? This is the reason because. This is the reason he trusts in thee. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind will stay upon thee, simply because he trusts in thee. You know what? So many times we try to work and we try to do this and we try to do this and impress God, that and impress God in order to forget God to bless us and give us peace. God says, you trust me and I'll give you peace. And then the works that you do will be a fruit of love. And you can know they'll be accepted. Now, you notice in this passage, he says nothing about how hard you trust. He just says nothing about your trust has to be perfect. Your faith has to be perfect. He says nothing about you can't fear while you trust. You know, fear is an emotion that we just can't control. When things get out of our hands, we just, we just, that's an emotion we just can't control. But even in our fear, we can lean on God. We can say, God, I don't understand it, I'm afraid. Just like that father who come said, said, Lord, I'm, I'm, he said, Jesus said, can you believe? He said, I'm, he said, Lord, I believe. He said, but I'm having trouble with it. He said, but if you say you can do it, I'm going to trust you to do it. Even if I can get my, even if I cannot get my emotions to cooperate, I'm going to trust you. You know what that means? That means every one of us can have that perfect peace. Because he did not put a requirement on how well it had to be. He just said, it's just, you know, and I've said this before, I think, but with faith is not a matter of how much. Faith is a matter of will. You either will believe or you won't. All the emotions, all those other things that we, we, we can't control, we don't need to worry about. The question is, is will you trust Him? Will you simply trust Him? Say, God, I don't understand what's going on. I, I can't fix what's going on. I can't see how you're going to fix what's going on. I don't see any evidence that you are going to fix, or you are fixing what's going on. But there's one thing I believe. I believe you're faithful to your promise. And I'm going to lean on you and trust you to do it. And I'm going to love you for doing it. Even if I never see it happen in my lifetime. Trust the Lord with all the heart. Lean not to know If you do that, the promise is that that God will keep you in perfect peace simply because you're willing to trust Him. That will keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah had found it to be a fact. And I want it to be my testimony when I die that I have found it a fact that God has been faithful. And God has kept this preacher Thank the greatest 
I think the greatest compliment, one of the greatest compliments I ever got was when you said your mom wanted me to come talk and speak to Miss Lou because she remembered my smile. You know why I smiled? I'm not smiling because everything's going the way I want it to. I'm smiling because God has done something on the inside that even through all the heartaches and all the trials, there's still something worth loving him for. And I want that to be my testimony. Matter of fact, you put that on my tombstone. I remember his <laughs> You say, I, you know, I said that because I, I figured, I know which one of us is going first. But, <laughs> but will you trust him this morning? Say, preacher, I've got this problem. I'd love to help you, but I can't. But I know one who can, if you just trust him. On the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more When the storms of life are o'er Meet me there Where the night dissolves away Into pure and perfect day I am going home to stay Meet me there Meet me there Savior waits to greet us, meet me there, meet me there, meet me there, where the faithful part no more, meet me One day I'll see his face, meet me there.